I'm Mike Sargent, and this is A Rise on Screen. Think you can handle it? The handle needs handling. An undercover cop and an ex-convict. Their paths should never have crossed. But when they find out they share a common enemy, they must work together. Paul Walker, David Bell, and Riza star in Brick Mansions. In the United States, it's okay to say you're HIV positive, but right here it's not. They shun my mother. The new documentary, Tanzania, A Journey Within, is about two unlikely friends who travel across Tanzania. We spoke to one of them, Kristen Kenny, and director Sylvia Kaminer, about the movie and what inspired Kenny to provide life-saving treatments for malaria in Africa. Malaria kills a child every minute, and it is so prevalent in that area. So I came back wanting to make a difference. I want him to feel pain. We should kick him in the balls. No, I really like the way your brain works. In The Other Woman, Cameron Diaz finds out her perfect boyfriend is married. When she and his wife become the most unlikely of best friends, they discover a third woman. Now, they all want revenge. All this and more on A Rise on Screen. I'm Mike Sargent, and welcome to Arise On Screen, your global home for films both on screen and behind the scenes. Let's get to it. First, with this week's box office winners. Captain America, The Winter Soldier, tops the box office this week, followed by Heaven Is For Real, Rio 2, Transcendence, and Bears rounds it out in the number five spot. And in movie news... In Your Eyes, the latest film from director Joss Whedon, is available to rent digitally for just $5. The man behind blockbusters like The Avengers premiered the film at this year's Tribeca Film Festival and released the supernatural boy meets girl story for purchase soon after the screening. The Tribeca Film Festival wrapped up on April 24th here in New York City. Give daddy some sugar. <laughs> Thank you. Disney is planning a new 3D animated film featuring the voice of singer Rihanna as the main character named Tip. The movie, Home, based on the critically acclaimed book The True Meaning of Smack Day, marks the first time that DreamWorks has put an African-American child as the lead in a storyline. Tip joins Tiana from Disney's The Princess Frog as one of the few black characters coming out of the major animation studios. Rihanna will voice along with Jim Parsons and Jennifer Lopez in the new film. The biopic Robeson is coming to the big screen with Vondi Curtis Hall directing. Robeson, an actor and political activist in the 1920s and 1950s, is remembered most for his role in Othello and singing of Old Man River in the movie Showboat. See what a scourge is laid upon your heat. Vondi Curtis Hall, a veteran Broadway singer, dancer, and actor, is set to begin production on Robeson early this year. Two-time Oscar-winning actor Tom Hanks and Oscar-winning director Steven Spielberg have worked together on three films and found box office gold with two, Saving Private Ryan and Catch Me If You Can. Can they do it again? The duo have teamed up for work on their fourth film, an untitled thriller set during the Cold War that Spielberg is eyeing to direct for DreamWorks. I've got no option but to sell you all for scientific experiments. And good news for Monty Python fans. The British comedy troupe's last reunion show of a 10-date run featuring the original surviving members will be broadcast simultaneously in select cinemas around the world. The Python members say that this will be their final time working together. And in festival news, the film Half of a Yellow Sun, starring Chiwetel Ejiofor and Thandie Newton and Anika Noni Rose, will have its New York premiere at the 2014 New York African Film Festival. The film, based on a novel by N N Nigerian author Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, is part of an eclectic mix of works featured that puts a spotlight on the realities of Africa and the diaspora. The New York African Film Festival begins on May 7th and runs through May 13th. Today, I'm joined by entertainment journalist Julie Walker from TheRoot.com and film critic Julian Roman from MovieWeb.com. 
Julian, welcome back. Mike, how you doing? Julie, welcome. Glad to have you here. So before we get to the movies, we're going to talk, we've got about three movies we're talking about today that have unlikely friendships. So I'm going to ask you what your favorite movies with unlikely friendships are. First, you, Julie. I would say Of Mice and Men is one of my top favorites. Okay, um, which version? Well, I like the John Malkovich, Gary Sinise version, um, but of course, you know, you've got to give props to the original as okay, well. Okay, now what do you like about that? Um, just the old-fashionedness of it, the simplicity of it. Um, you know, the idea that two very different people find themselves as friends for a number of reasons. Um, and that they come together, and it's just this very simple story and the true, you know, idea of friendship. Okay, all right. Now, what about you, Julian? Well, Mike, I would say uh, The Professional. Oh, that's mine. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Great mind. okay. Uh, the 1994 film from Luc Besson Great. that starred uh, John Reno and, of course, the Natalie Portman in her first big role. And basically, he's a very introverted hitman mm -hmm. who befriends this young girl whose family is basically killed by the evil cop played by Gary Oldman. And it's a very interesting film. It skates a lot of very strange issues, but it's a beautiful friendship. And in the end, of course, he really comes to save her and regard her as the most important person he's ever met. I, I agree. I love that film. And have you ever seen the French version, the extended yes. version? That's great. It's called Leon, the professional in French. And it's got some scenes that really couldn't work too well in America. Definitely. So I really like those films. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what you all have to say about our unlikely friendship films today. And we'll be back. This is big. You haven't dated just one guy in a long time. You cleared the whole roster. I cleared the bench. Coming up, Bentley meets her boyfriend's wife, they become friends, and when they discover a third woman, the ladies team up for revenge in the hilarious new comedy, The Other Woman, next on Arise On Screen. I thought you were giving him hormones. I am. Not for a pre-op transsexual. I look like I need a bra. I think you're going through manopause. Ma manopause? Uh-huh. Is it a little... In The Other Woman, Cameron Diaz, Leslie Mann, and Kate Upton are out for revenge when they find out they're all seeing the same man. The film is supermodel Kate Upton's first major role, and at the London premiere, it sounds like Upton held her own with the other leading ladies. You know, we had instant chemistry. Usually it takes a second to kind of get up to speed with each other and kind of get into a groove. But with them, it was like an instant um, chemistry. And we just had a really good time together. Yes, you know, Leslie and Cameron both ha were there for me from the very beginning of the movie. You know, from whenever I felt uncomfortable, they'd be standing right there off screen supporting me. And We just had so much fun together. You know, they're such great women. They're just such good-hearted, nurturing, generous, lovely women who are so talented and are completely just the best partners you could have in it. Welcome back to Arise on Screen. Our first film is The Other Woman. So I'm going to go to you first, Julie, but I have to say I really like this movie, and I was surprised that I did because it didn't look like that interesting a premise. I thought, no, nah, okay, but I was surprised. I was very surprised by Leslie Mann's work. I thought she was really, really funny. But you're a fan of Nick Cassavetti. He's a director. I am, but I'm also a fan now of Kate Upton because she surprised me in this film as well. I believe I she has the comedic chops. She was very funny. There were, you know, not a lot of scenes with her. She comes into the film a little late, but she was enjoyable to watch. There was a great chemistry between those three women. Definitely. Now, Julian, you thought, when I asked you what you thought of her performance, you were like, there was a performance. So you didn't think much of Upton. No, I didn't. I mean, she's obviously very attractive, and that's probably what led to her getting this role. But I would use the term acting loosely when describing her performance. Really? Wow. Okay, now, but you agree with me with Leslie Mann. You thought Leslie Mann did it really. You thought without her, the film would have been terrible. Oh, I would have fell flat. I mean, she has all the dramatic role, and she does a lot of the, the comedy as far as, like, the hijinks part of the film, and she's very talented, and I think she's really the glue that keeps those other two characters working. Now, you say you liked her, but you didn't think she was, she's being underused in general. No, I thought that Cameron Diaz was really the star of the film, and she is the star of the film. I mean, it was a vehicle for her to use her uh, physical comedy that she gets away with so well. So, I thought it really... But it, in the end, it really hinged on the two of them, Cameron and Leslie. 
I agree. I, I actually I agree with you too that I thought the chemistry between the three women was believable. It was a little bit over the top, and that's where I felt you know a female director might have taken it a little different. You know, I know both of you don't necessarily agree, but I can always tell whether a film is either written or directed or both by a woman from seeing so many films that are written and directed by men. So we're going to move on to our next film, which is called The Last Passenger, and it's a thriller. And it stars Doug Ray Scott and Lindsay Duncan. It's about a man and his young son on a hijacked train. When the train came into the station, it accelerated. Whoever this man is, he wants to go out with a bang. Now, I was very surprised with this film because I did not know uh, too much about it. I have seen Doug Ray Scott do a few things, but I thought it really worked. And, and I think you agree with me, uh, Julian. You liked the pacing. It was very Hitchcockian. It definitely took its time to set us up. And you did like the relationship between the father and the son. That worked for you. I, I did. I mean, what you said about it being Hitchcockian is a very, very uh, good way to look at this movie. It's not a big action film. It's very small. All the action takes place on the train. It's more of a cerebral thriller. And I think it might disappoint some audiences who are expecting like a, a very grand payoff, but if you like good acting and a very tense situation, then it's very entertaining. Well, I thought I thought so too. Now, you uh, you really like the relationship, and you pointed out a scene that I thought was terrific. There's a scene where the little boy almost falls out the train, and he grabs him, and then there's another scene where he's trying to get the little boy to jump off because he doesn't know whether the train's ever going to stop. I thought that was a great scene. You liked it. In both scenes, he wants to save his son. He just goes about it in, in a very different way. I did. I, I thought the son was a, a great actor, and, you know, sometimes it's hard with children. I thought he was very good. I thought um, there was, you know, a nice build-up, too, to the tension, and I thought that there was... It was kind of a classic whodunit, in a way, as well. Um, with a sort of surprise twist ending. Well, it did have a surprise twist ending, and I don't want to give it away, but also not a who done it so much as a why done it. Like, why is this happening? And one of the things I liked, and this is coming back to the Hitchcockian, they have all these little things that happen. Like, you see the beautiful blonde. Is she involved? You know, you see this other character, and you don't know who is involved, how big the conspiracy is, and what it is. That worked for me. Now, what about you? Did you enjoy the ending without giving I, it away? I, I completely agree, but I, I think some people might be disappointed in the ending. But what makes this film, to me, very entertaining is the fact that it's unexpected completely. And basically, you have a small film with great acting, very, very tense, and then what happens is very, very surprising in a different kind of way. And when you see a lot of films that are like this, it's unusual to find a very eclectic ending, so I did appreciate that. I felt with an ending, sometimes it's either a Hollywood ending or nothing, and I thought that this was a combination of the two because um, when I say a whodunit, in reality, sometimes we don't know how things end. We don't know why people do the things they do, and that's True. real life. True. And this, this film takes on some of that. No, I agree, and, and I have to say, I, I was surprised. I was surprised some of the directions it took and some of the things that didn't happen that would have happened in a Hollywood movie. Uh, not unlike Runaway Train or the Denzel Washington film. Unstoppable. Unstoppable, right. which was a more exciting film, but I think this was, like you said, a little more cerebral. Okay, well, that's good. We have more films to talk about. So we'll be back. It's such a unique opportunity to take a journey like this with one of my best friends and share in his experience of going home. Still to come. A new documentary about a life-changing journey between two unlikely friends. Tanzania, A Journey Within. We sit down with the film's award-winning director, Sylvia Kaminer, and subject Kristen Kenny, who survived sickness and found her soul in a journey across Africa. Next, here on Arise On Screen. No! <laughs>